Good morning, everybody, and welcome for this uh, first workshop uh, on AI Express. Okay, AI Express is a little bit difficult for Italian, so maybe sometimes we will say IX, IX, I Express, and so on, but please forgive us. And uh, again, I want to thank you to be here in a so big number. So uh, I'm Christopher Battista from Planet Tech Italia. I'm the head of the Space Stream Business Unit. And together with me, this tomorrow, there are other people belonging to the company and to the agency that uh, are funding that is funding this project. So I want to welcome uh, Alice Bert. Uh, good morning, Alice. And uh, there is also Lorenzo Ferruglio from uh, uh, Aiko and Stefan Antonetti from uh, the Orbit and Alice Barth, of course, from the European Space Agency. Okay, before uh, starting, I want also to thank you, to thank Gianluca Furano, and uh, he is our technical officer from ESTEC, ISA. Um, before starting, some uh, recommendation. I hear, uh, for example, an echo, so maybe someone of the speaker is uh, with okay you mute or your mic and uh, for the attendee you have uh, two tools by which you can uh, interact with us and uh, it is a question and answer when uh, you can put your question when you want please write when you want and we will try to address during the meeting or uh, uh, at the final, uh, in the final part of the meeting. And also you can chat if you want with someone in the, in the room or with uh, everybody. Okay. Just, uh, uh, as you know, uh, from the agenda we sent you, we, we have a brief introduction uh, and uh, we send you also a survey. Uh, we can recall the survey at the end, so to collect uh, most of the information from you from, for your interest. Uh, and uh, there is also uh, a first part where we will speak about of the project uh, in its uh, technical aspect, uh, in its uh, business model uh, uh, activities and uh, what is the, the forcing business models. And uh, we will finish with the opportunities uh, for you to be on board of this uh, journey. And uh, of course, we will try to set up the next steps for this program. But you know, AIX is a, a program co-funded by European Space Agency uh, by means of the Incubed program. And so I'm very pleased to leave the floor to Alice Barth to say something about this exceptional program that is able to turn innovative idea in viable business. So please, Alice, the floor is yours. Thank you, Christopher. Um, so, uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Alice. Uh, I'm working at the European Space Agency in the Earth Observation Directorate. More specifically, um, I'm working in the FILAB. Uh, so, the FILAB uh, is a special department, uh, basically, who was set up to look out for new uh, technologies and see how they can be applied to EO and understand how. Um, so, if you can go to the next slide, please, Cristoforo. Uh, we have uh, basically two sides of the office. On the one side, uh, an exploratory office for, let's say, blue skies ideas. Uh, at the moment, they are mainly looking at applying uh, machine learning to our observation, but also looking at other disruptive technology and how it can be applied to EO. Oops. <laughs> um, and uh, we also have on the other side, uh, a commercial program. Uh, so that's the invest office uh, for which I'm working. Uh, we are working more at um, commercial and more mature technologies and try uh, to make them uh, mature enough to actually meet the market. Uh, and so this is the INQ program, uh, which is funding this AI Express activity. Uh, and I have a video to introduce the program that uh, you can now uh, run, please. Space plays a key role in our daily lives. Satellites provide us with hundreds of terabytes of data every single day. 
The benefits of these data are endless. They can be used, for example, to detect forest fires, measure water availability for farmers, and aid in coastal monitoring. Earth observation data have enormous unexplored potential. Is your company willing to make the most of Earth observation? ESA's Investing in Industrial Innovation, or Incubed program, helps develop ideas and turns them into innovative and commercially viable products and services. If your business uses satellite data for maritime activities, such as coastal monitoring and cargo ship tracking, or urban spaces, natural hazards, air pollution, or even forestry and agriculture, then Incubed is for you. We can help your company co-fund the development of your product, whether it's a satellite, payload, software, system, or complete end-to-end -end solution. We can also connect you with ESA's world-class technical expertise and provide access to our facilities, laboratories, and intricate network. If your unique idea is Earth observation focused, innovative, and commercially viable, then visit our website, incubed.v.esa.int to apply. The next Incubed activity could be yours. Thank you, Cristoforo. Um, so this is the ESA co-funding program. Uh, as you have seen, it's focused on Earth observation data. Uh, but I assume looking at the number of attendees today that we have a more diverse crowd. Um, so I just pointed out some of the few programs, uh, co-funded programs in ESA that are looking at other verticals such as navigation, telecoms, other general space technology. So uh, if you want uh, additional information, you can find everything online. Uh, can you please go to the next slide? Um, so now, uh, why am I telling you all of this? Uh, so as uh, Cristoforo said, uh, Incubed, uh, uh, well, AI Express has been selected by the Incubed program to be part of um, part of the program and is co-founded uh, through uh, the European Space Agency uh, by the Italian Space Agency. Um, so a quick work on what uh, the potential we saw in AI Express activity and why it was selected. So it basically gathered the three things uh, we are looking for in an incubed activity. Those are uh, innovation. So basically what we saw is that uh, it showed a disruptive business model uh, and also enabled uh, bringing AI at the edge. So actually in space, uh, it showed some Earth observation component with some well-suited use cases for EO payloads and applications. And also it showed the real commercial uh, focus with uh, 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 real needs emerging from uh, the space uh, sector and really uh, reducing the bar and barrier entry to space. So um, that's uh, why it was selected, meeting all these criteria. And also we saw a solid consortium uh, to make this potential a reality. Uh, and so uh, we, so that would be uh, Gianluca and me, uh, John Luca is the technical officer for this activity. Are looking forward to see how this activity unfolds, and really looking forward to listen to the conversations today and see what needs emerge from the conversation. So, thank you, everyone. Thank you, Alice. Thank you for this introduction about the, the different programs that could be used to transform idea in business. Okay, before starting, some few words about the company. You know, Planet, the Orbit, and ICO, and. Uh, uh, Planetic, uh, we are all uh, SME, and uh, Planetic Italia was born in 1994. We are around eight people, 80 people in Italy and Greece, and we covered uh, all, all the value chain of space from geoanalytics to sensing, uh, from, from the downstream to the upstream, because uh, we start from uh, the downstream. So please, uh, uh, Stefano. Say something about the orbit, a few words about the orbit. Uh, sorry for having uh, the bar on uh, your presentation. I don't know how to uh, hide it when it appears because uh, if I click on the presentation, but okay, sorry. Okay, no worries. Thank you, Cristoforo. Welcome, everyone. Uh, this is Stefano Antonetti in charge of business development at the orbit. For those that don't know the orbit, we are an Italian company based close to Milan, uh, we are about 100 people in three establishments, Italy, Portugal, and the UK. We just turned 10 years old uh, a few days ago. Uh, what we do is space transportation. So we have launched our the first two uh, carriers. Uh, um, their name is Ion 
And the first one was launched in September. The second one uh, was launched in January 24th. We're going to have other uh, three launches this year, one in June, one in <clears throat> and two in December. And what we do, we transport CubeSats, payload experiments, IOV, IOD, and uh, uh, offset payloads uh, uh, in orbit. So um, if you want more information, just go on our website and, and social uh, uh, links in the social network. Thank you very much. Have a nice uh, workshop. Thank you, Stefano. Lorenzo? Yeah, thank you, Christopher. Hi, everybody. So for those that don't know us, we are ICO, a deep tech uh, company based in Torino, Italy. Our vision is to build uh, an artificial intelligence ecosystem to support the future of space mission, not just around the Earth, but also in deep space. And we specialize in uh, artificial intelligence and automation technologies for space upstream. Our uh, deep learning algorithms have flown already in our uh, TRL9. And at the moment, we count 17 employees, but we scheduled uh, to be 27 employees by the end of 2021. At the moment, we have uh, several active contracts between the agency and the industry. Thank you and enjoy the workshop. Thank you, Lorenzo. So let's dive into the core part of the workshop. And let's start for giving you an overview of AI Express. And as you see here, we call it also AI at the power of X. Okay, new space technologies uh, are emerging uh, every day. And uh, so this was the scenario in which we started the idea of changing our way of doing in the space value chain. So let's take a pinch of technology push. Can I upload new code for every task on my satellite yet already in orbit? A pinch of operational tactics. Can I deploy my satellite exactly when I need it? And a pinch of money saving. Can I pay only when satellite data are useful for me? If we give a look to the traditional EO value chain, but in general to the traditional space value chain, we can see that it is a very static. All the, the actors in the value chain are always the same in the sense that giving a mission, you have always the same actors performing each of the tasks inside this value chain, and it is very static. So you cannot achieve. And even if with the, uh, the new space and the, the new technology, uh, we have lower the barriers for the space access. So we have a big stream of data coming from a lot of mission. We still have poor flexibility in changing the behavior of the value chain, a limited autonomy, missed observation, and poor quality or irrelevant downlink data. So we cannot get information that we need and we get information that we not, don't use. But spaceships are not merely vessels. That is empty things you put stuff into. They were things, beings in their own right at least, a being, and perhaps a lot more so. This is a, uh, this is a text from matter from uh, banks and we strongly believe that it represents the, the earth of uh, AI Express. So we, are, we were speaking about uh, beings. Let's take a look to the human beings and uh, to the human digestive system and the relative food value chain. I'm sure that if I ask to you, what is the food value chain for the human beings? You say that by mouth, you collect and store food. You download it by the food pipe, you process by stomach, liver, large intensity, and you arrive to the downstream service. Okay, I don't want to speak about in detail about the downstream service of the food value chain, but we have it already. But it's not the reality because even before collecting the food, you use the other sensors that we have to see the, the food, to understand if it is good or not, if it is a poison for, uh, for our human being. And uh, we do it uh, even with, by touch or by smelling it. Or, and even after collecting uh, by mouth, you, you use your taste sense. And even at the edge, you start in pre-processing food processing what you have collected by saliva and by chewing. We, we could call it also data reduction. 
but uh, only after that you download it. So when you are sure that it is a good thing to be downloaded, it is a good thing to be then processed um, by the stomach and the, the liver and intestine, you, only that you download. But not only, we don't, don't, we don't not only use the, the sense that we have, but even we use external sensor like a kitchen scale to, to, to set the quantity that you want to eat or even a, a watch, a clock to, for the timing. And so a cutter, a knife for the selection to divide what is could be good, clouds, for example, from what ca it cannot be. So we strongly believe that uh, even our space value chain must be very linked to and uh, very similar to the food value chain. And uh, we also believe that it is a shared vision, even by ESA, where here you can see a lot of satellite orbiting and uh, all of them are connected, even starting from IoT, drones, hubs, uh, and uh, all the satellite already in space by using the technology that we have today at our disposition. And this vision is what we call space stream, where we have put together the words upstream and downstream, and we try to overcome the sharp separation between them. And so we think that the space stream can be characterized by networks of heterogeneous and distributed ground segments. So antennas and ground segments that are not only devoted to their, uh, to their mission, but can be accessed by different kinds of mission. And we have a lot of examples already in, uh, in our panorama. Then we have swarms of cooperative and competitive space agents. I hope that uh, in the future we will have competition in the sense that we can ask for information and the different actors could uh, react to this, uh, to this question from us uh, in a competitive way. And uh, thanks to that, we can have upstream and downstream mixed in the fog of the, of the continuous space stream. And uh, why we want to have the, the space stream? Because we want to reach the goal of responsiveness, reactivity, and low latency, so that we can give quick, quick answers to our customers uh, for already planned activities, or we can react to not planned activities, and we can uh, provide with information for, uh, for our customer, uh, reducing the latency they need to wait for them. And uh, we can do that by a deep customization and complete integration of the service inside the workflow of our customer and everything must be done in a secure and traceable environment. The information that we want to give to our customer must, must be secured, must be tracked by some technology and must not be hacked. So we put some brain, tongue and knife on uh, ION and we got iExpress living. And as said, thanks to Incubed Program. If we want to give a definition of AIX, we can say that it is a space ecosystem as a service, where the onboard component of AIX are useful to load the application on board and to manage all the space hardware resources that we call, we say that they are uberized because they put their time to our disposition. Why the AIX, the AIX ground component defines the space app store useful to virtualize all the hardware behind the ecosystem. We started the design driver for IX, of course, rely on the fact that data are a commodity today. More and more are a commodity. We can, considering the lowering of barriers for space access, we can have ever growing constellation. We can rely on, on, on very high performance onboard computing, we can have, we can use all the spare time of the, all the resources belonging to the ecosystem. And we try and we want to have a big shift from human to machine user and to interaction between machines. We are also convinced that uh, it can be used in very, in many, many case, use cases. 
and that they go from continuous monitoring to critical change. Here you can say only three example, three uh, pillar, three application example, and some uh, very very deep customization of the of some kind of application like oil spill, thermal anomalies, river plume anomalies, non-collaborative ship. And it means that some, there are some case, use cases that today are not feasible that could be made feasible by using AI access because you don't use all the value chain and the supply chain every time that you want to address a use case, but only you use the most effective part of the value chain if the information is useful for our customer. So we, again, uh, what is the value proposition? As said, uh, we call it also AI to the power of X, because we strongly believe that thanks to the AI access, we can have a lot of use cases implemented with a single mission. So we can change the behavior of our value chain thanks to capability of AI Express to change its, uh, its way of working. In, and uh, this can be done by uh, having configurable AI, artificial intelligence, available on board. So for each task, we can change the, the processing step uh, happening on the edge. We can even integrate the components, the function of AI Express on other payload and on other satellite. We can, uh, so we can define, considering what is already flying, we can define on the fly new operational concept. And of course, before entering the operation, we can test and validate all the activity in an end-to-end -end stream. And it can be done for commercial, but even for science activity. And finally, we strongly think that we can transform the typical stakeholders of a, a mission, of a space mission, like I express easy because it is a space mission, we want to transform them in shareholders. Okay, I think that the, this was the introduction that I want to give you to have a clear understanding of what we want to achieve and why we want to achieve that. Now I leave the floor to Leonardo Moruso from Planetech to, uh, to describe some uh, technical uh, specification about behind the, the, the project. Okay, here I am, sorry for the problem I had. Th thank you for uh, the words. So, now we'll start to, to, to talk a bit of how we are making uh, the, this possible. Uh, so we uh, have been uh, talking about the idea behind uh, AIX until now. And the idea at the end uh, could be quite simple, but when, when we come to implementation, uh, AIX things start to be a bit complex and it often happens. Uh, I have some issues uh, in, uh, in explaining this. <laughs> so uh, I'll try to, to keep it uh, uh, simple, but please uh, don't hesitate to in posing question uh, on the chat. Uh, today, I'm, I'm starting from uh, the, the core component uh, of uh, AIX. Uh, so the, the, what we call the AIX box, uh, I, I'll call it the box in for the, in the next time, so it's easier. And it is uh, almost a small component. Uh, roughly, we can uh, think to, to it as a, a sort of onboard computer with some specific software on board. And on board, it mostly behaves as a, a, a payload in, in the sense uh, that it's not replacing the, the main onboard computer uh, on a satellite. But, and its role as a payload is uh, uh, to provide uh, services, uh, the, the AIX uh, ecosystem services to the, to the whole spacecraft, to also to the other payloads that are also on board. Uh, in the, the, the incubed activities, we, we are going to, to turn the, the single components into uh, an end-to-end -end system. And the box is uh, uh, one, one of the components. 
uh, the box will be on board uh, the ion uh, satellites. Uh, so on a constellation growing in time of satellites. And um, we'll give uh, computational capabilities at, uh, at the edge. So enabling the, the satellites uh, to, to the system. Then the, the constellation itself will be part of, uh, of the end-to-end -end system, uh, starting on the ion carriers. And uh, then finally, the, the app store. So um, a place in, in the cloud, uh, uh, collecting application can be deployed uh, on board directly in space on the satellites. And all, all this that will be uh, linked by uh, an hybrid infrastructure allowing for uh, uh, smart contracts and the autonomous management of machine-to-machine uh, -machine interfaces. So the single pieces, uh, summarizing single pieces are the, the box, the, the constellation uh, with the flying uh, hardware, the hybrid infrastructure able to provide services to final users, uh, both machine to machine uh, users and uh, final user going directly from the web and the, the app store. This uh, hybrid infrastructure mixing computing at the edge and uh, application that, that are uh, uh, stored in, in the cloud. Uh, the, the onboard resources, all the onboard resources available on the make uh, made available by the spacecraft itself on demand, the app store itself and uh, the, the service, let's say, this is the ground segment, resources that can be uh, completely transparent to users and they can be used as a service. Here is a sketch of the overall system, and we can use it to, to show how the, the IAX on-demand services will work like, trying to go step by step. Uh, the, the entry point are the customer interface you see on the left. Uh, so requests could come from uh, humans or also from automatic interfaces. Uh, let's consider a human operator going through the, the, the app store. So he, uh, he, she selects the, the, the application among those uh, available. And let's say he wants an event detection on a specific area of interest. So he has to choose uh, the, the, the event detection algorithm, the, the area he's interested uh, to. The detection accuracy uh, may be trading uh, false alarm rate or to spatial accuracy, for instance, and then simply yes uh, to activate the task. Then uh, the, the backend infrastructure will uh, take care of checking the feasibility considering the resources uh, which are available on board and uh, the constraints the, the, the request uh, is posing. And when this is assessed, uh, maybe with uh, at the beginning at least uh, with the uh, human interaction uh, with, with uh, customers, the, the, the request uh, will be brought on board uh, by the, the, the infrastructure. And on board, uh, we will have uh, the, 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 the application, the, the neural network configuration, uh, the parameters, the, the EO sensor configuration, tasking, and also all the auxiliary data uh, where the, they were needed in, uh, in the application. On board, the request will be managed through the security infrastructure as a smart contract. Uh, so giving access to the resource uh, shared with the system uh, according to the application needs. Uh, the negotiation and the access to the spacecraft subsystem uh, is completely transparent to the application. It is managed by the, the, the security infrastructure, the smart contracts. Uh, no need to worry about how things actually uh, has to happen uh, on board. Then the workflow could be quite uh, simple. Data are acquired, uh, processed, and uh, the extracted information uh, is sent back to the customer as soon as it is available. 
or uh, we can also consider um, uh, automated workflow where the, the actionable information is also able to uh, trigger a, another step of the process. Uh, for instance, a straightforward application uh, we all, always use in our uh, uh, example is fire detection. Uh, AIX is able to send back the alert with, with fire coordinates and an estimated accuracy uh, rate in, uh, in maybe in, in minutes, let's say. And uh, in, in this way, uh, we see the data that themselves, the, they have no more value. Uh, taking them to the art uh, would take too much time to, to raise an effective alarm. And then we can also, as I was mentioning, we can also think to uh, uh, complex schemas where uh, we have uh, a low resolution sensor uh, with a low power sensor able to, to stay uh, on for most of the time, which only act as maybe with a resolution at hundreds of meters and it will, it will act only as a trigger when an event is triggered at low resolution uh, uh, any acquisition for uh, a multispectral uh, sensor at meter level could be activated and the algorithm could check autonomously if the, if the alert was uh, has to be erased on the ground or, or not. So the, the, the pieces one by one, uh, th th this was the system and then uh, I'm trying to talk uh, just uh, a bit of the single pieces. The, the box is actually uh, made of a uh, an high performance computing platform and uh, of a software framework, which uh, has in charge of the abstraction of everything uh, be behind the, the bus, uh, its data, all the computing uh, platform idea. It, it also cares of the data interfaces and um, uh, also the, uh, provides a set of uh, uh, functions and libraries already available and tested on, on the platform itself. So both uh, deterministic libraries, uh, mostly re related to, to image processing and then all the, the parts uh, dealing with uh, AI. Together with the box, uh, we provide a software programming interface and a full development uh, environment. Uh, which makes uh, users uh, able to uh, integrate in, in, in their own platform if, platform if they want and to develop their own application on, on top of the, of the base libraries. Um, <clears throat> a fundamental part of the box, uh, which also enables the, the automatic function is, is the, the hardware infrastructure, which also includes uh, uh, hardware dedicated to security management and to the execution of smart contracts in the uh, blockchain technology way, let's say. So it uh, supported in, in uh, automated workflow and so it is also able to uh, measure how uh, many resources uh, the, the application is uh, asking to the system. Obviously, uh, we also need uh, uh, earth, earth observation uh, sensor, or we can better call it uh, earth intelligence. So we need sensor. Each of the AIX uh, satellites will embark one, or maybe two sensors. And today we, we also are here to, to, to collect uh, your uh, uh, needs, your ideas about the, the, what sensor you will mostly like. Um, and uh, we know we, we are starting with, with a set of uh, ready-made applications. So we know that uh, uh, few bands are um, used today in uh, most of application, but the, uh, our uh, sensor would be somehow smart, so they will be able to trade uh, among different capabilities. So maybe trading a special resolution to, to spectral or signal to noise ratio. 
And uh, the, 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 the reference at the moment, uh, it's uh, Sentinel-2 like, uh, also because we are targeting AI application neural network and we have uh, to, to train algorithms to make them available on board. So this, this is the, the base idea. Um, and we are also open in our model to embark a sensor from uh, third party uh, companies who, who want to contribute to, to and sharing the revenues with the system or maybe integrating their idea, uh, their, their uh, validation activities uh, to, into a, a commercial uh, model. Third step, the, the, the onboard services. This is uh, the the software layer, uh, which uh, abstracts the all, all the uh, infrastructure needs, so it makes uh, available data distribution uh, and uh, onboard uh, um, uh, services to to the uh, to to the platform to the AX platform. So uh, satellite position, the attitude sensor pointing, which we will use, then to. Uh, to geocode the image or make uh, fine code registration or so. All the, the, the services also abstract all the interpayloads communication and uh, uh, provide uh, as, uh, let's say, as a, an API, as a service on board, uh, all the resources that the application needs. So computing time, mass memory, and access to, to downlink. Uh, we also are uh, implementing a services uh, at, with very low bandwidth, but uh, at low latency, uh, able to, uh, to, to transmit uh, uh, something like a, a tweet from, from the satellite in, in minutes. So the, the, the result of, uh, for the, of uh, an alert could be sent back to Earth in uh, in a few minutes, uh, and instead of uh, waiting, the, the next uh, ground station is available. And finally, the, the onboard services includes uh, the machine-to-machine the -machine interface, the, the security ring, uh, uh, security ring management, and all, all the things that are, uh, will result uh, transparent to, to the final uh, service users. Then we have a second level of services. Uh, the, the, those uh, we will have on, on the in the cloud on the on the app store. So ready-made application uh, made for uh, the monitoring, change, novelty detection, and based on a set of standard processing libraries. Uh, so I was mentioning co-registration, geolocation, and so on. We will also have a, a library uh, intended to neural network uh, configuration uh, and uh, 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 activation on board and all, all the things uh, that uh, need to be managed. Uh, I would like to mention also FDIR maybe when, if you are a, a, a developing a, a component or your EO sensor, FDAR could be a bit different if uh, you have autonomy, autonomous capacity on board, so can a, a bit uh, evolve from the traditional way of uh, making FDAR. The App Store itself, it's simply uh, the catalog of, of this application and uh, will uh, uh, provide the means to configure and deploy the, the application uh, and interact uh, with the, the, the system and also to, to combine all the single blocks in the, in the system into complex uh, workflows to be tailored to, to user needs. Uh, last thing it's worth to, to, to be mentioned, it's uh, the, uh, the development kit. So we are uh, targeting the idea you can use your favorite uh, machine learning framework to uh, prepare your your, uh, your application if you want to have a custom application on board. And the development kit is the, is the thing you will use to uh, test uh, your trained algorithm inside our system. 
So we provide the, 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 the full tool chain, the programming interface, uh, and also the, the, all the tools you need to uh, validate the, um, the algorithm before uh, putting it, it uh, on board. Concluding the, the system view, AIX provides uh, an environment where uh, processing happens at the edge and space apps are defined in the, in the cloud. The process at the edge takes care of latency, network throughput, information storage, and so on. And thanks to IX, uh, new app can be uploaded and hosted uh, payloads, uh, becoming now more and more software defined payloads, uh, can be loaded and deployed on, on satellite. Uh, as a forward, um, it's uh, just a, a closer look to, to the application side. Uh, just one slide and then I'll leave the floor to, to Lorenzo. Uh, the, the, um, the system, as I was mentioning, is made of two branches, let's say, the deterministic uh, libraries and the uh, deep learning uh, side. On the, the what we call uh, imaging, image processing libraries, it, uh, they provide the basic building blocks. So uh, capacity to manage uh, standard data position, uh, attitude pointing, um, and able to provide uh, some uh, common blocks with co-registration or maybe a super resolution for, for instance, and, uh, cloud detection could be combined with uh, these things in order to have an optimized um, workflow uh, arriving to define the, the base for uh, the machine learning uh, reasoning. And according to this machine learning uh, part, I would leave the floor to Lorenzo from Michael. Who... Yes, thank you, Leo. Lorenzo, for is yours, yeah. Thank you, absolutely. Uh, shall we just, uh, shall I share the screen again just to pass through the slides? Yeah, if, okay. as you prefer. Uh, it should be easy, uh, but uh, yeah, <laughs> it I'll wasn't just... so easy to me. Yeah, I'll, ju I'll just share the screen. Uh, one second. All right, are you able to see? Okay, let's just hide this, my God, and maybe, uh, all right. All right, so let's have a closer look on uh, how we are actually enabling uh, the use of deep learning applications uh, on board IEX and therefore on board the, the space system that will integrate IEX. And let's have a look on how the, the information that we obtain from deep learning applications are then used to enable advanced automation on board, uh, um, uh, on board the, the, the satellite and in particular uh, using the services provided by IEX. So as you can see here, this is a very high level uh, overview of what is the, 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 the information flow that we plan to enable with IEX. Uh, starting from the Earth Observation Payload, uh, we are envisioning the use of deep learning applications in space to extract high-level information from the data acquired by the payload. Uh, this um, deep learning application will enable, in fact, uh, uh, being able to do data science uh, in orbit uh, on a satellite. And then uh, this uh, information high level uh, that has been extracted will be, uh, from different ap uh, applications that will be managed by an application manager will be then passed uh, uh, to a reasoning and automation module that maybe I'll use it better. Um, that takes care of uh, pro processing this, uh, this information extracted by the payload and also considering uh, additional information such as the platform status, it could be also external, external constraints Generally speaking, additional information that we want to include in the automation and reasoning part and provides actionable decisions to the system or to the, um, let's say, data that will be downlinked uh, after the deep learning application is run. So in this idea, I, IEX uh, will take care of the complete automation chain. Uh, okay, so 
how do we get to this? Uh, basically, we start from uh, processing uh, the, the data from the payload uh, and um, injecting this information on uh, deep learning applications. Uh, this, um, this application will be uh, shown in a couple of examples later. And then uh, uh, sp for specific example, depending on the specific requirement for the customer, we, we plan to consider other information that could be the satellite telemetry, for example, or external uh, constraints such as uh, downlinking windows opportunities or areas of interest. Uh, these concepts that are um, more related to uh, general concepts of, of automation that we can perform in space. This information will be ingested into the automation module. And at the first stage, we plan on uh, uh, enabling uh, actionable decisions on the data acquire, acquired by the payload. So uh, let's say simple use cases, such as um, uh, selecting or prioritizing data acquired by the payload. Think about cloud detection, a really key example. Let's uh, just not downlink uh, the data that are covered, uh, images that are covered by clouds. But on a later stage, we can envision even more advanced uh, uh, actionable decisions that could even imply the commanding of a specific satellite, for example, to do maneuvers, to follow specific targets on the ground or to point a specific area of interest, depending on the, on the use case. All these concepts will be enabled by the automation technology that will be on board the IEX. Now let's have a look at the first two applications that we plan to, to make available in this, uh, in this IEX uh, uh, marketplace and concept in general. First of all, first application is Clarity. Clarity is a deep learning based application that enables uh, cloud detection on board satellites. Uh, this is, um, uh, let's say, leverages on our uh, TRL9 heritage that we got for uh, uh, the, 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 the Norby demonstration of this technology in 2019. And uh, it is made, designed to be compatible with uh, Earth observation payload in the range from uh, um, visible spectrum to uh, multispectral and hyperspectral. The second type of application, uh, this is a much lower TRL, but this is a demo application that you can uh, still envision to be tested within the IEX framework, uh, is a ship detection. Ship detection uh, to detect potentially different types of ships uh, in maritime uh, environments. And this is one of the most uh, promising use cases that uh, has been requested by uh, potentially, uh, potential early adopters in European and US ecosystem. Now, as you see, the, the concept and the idea of a deep learning application is fairly unlimited. There could be uh, different types of applications solving the same problem, for example, cloud detection, ship detection, terrain segmentation, and so on. And uh, there could be, of course, uh, different problems to be solved. So uh, forest fire detection, it could be um, urban area monitoring and so on. All these applications will be then, be inclu will be then included on the App Store uh, of IEX that is meant really to represent a, an App Store in a, in a modern way where you can choose and select the applications that are ready to be deployed to an IEX device. So really streamlining the the, the, the adoption and the integration of, uh, of these new deep learning uh, applications that are developed and that are present on the store uh, to simplify this integration onto the, um, the IEX device. Uh, just uh, keep in mind that the concept of the app store for us is meant to represent a set of the validated applications that are um, approved, let's put it this way, to run on an IEX device. Uh, let's touch a little bit uh, briefly on what we plan to do for the developers. So the goal of IEX should be to um, simplify the, the, the development of the learning applications in space. So we plan to, to, to develop uh, a framework that is compatible with most uh, of the most promising uh, um, deep learning uh, software framework for, for developers. So uh, having a look at TensorFlow, PyTorch, for example, and so on. The goal is that uh, you should be able to deploy a uh, deep learning application to IEX, uh, irrespectively of which framework you are, you're using for development. Now, this is the goal uh, we expect in the upcoming stages of the projects to, to narrow down the list a little bit of the, of the frameworks that will be compatible. Uh, but this is a general idea. We would then provide lower level, uh, let's say, uh, software well software frameworks to to transition from the specific uh, uh, framework that you use for developing 
the deep learning application to the specific hardware target that will be implemented on, on the IEX product. And uh, with this, I think uh, we can conclude the deep learning part and I leave the word back to Planetech. All right, so I think now it's my turn to take control. Yeah, please, uh, Stefan. Okay. Okay, I hope you guys can see my screen all right. So uh, let's- You cannot uh, hear very well, Stefan. Uh, please be close to me. All right. Um, so yeah, okay, welcome again. I just touch quickly uh, our idea of the business model on uh, iExpress. Of course, I don't pretend to be exhaustive in five minutes. So therefore, if you have any question, please follow up. Uh, but I mean, let's, uh, let's recap the main principle of the application. It's, let's understand how uh, both users, customers, and of course, the members of the AX consortium can benefit from, uh, from, uh, from this, the, from uh, this business model. So recapping, we have basically um, three main uh, area of customer audience that we uh, foresee for AIX uh, to benefit from, from the outcome of the, of the, of the service. Um, the first uh, area of audience is of course, uh, those uh, developers and prototypers of uh, algorithms and, and applications and services. And those will benefit, as you heard before in the previous presentations, from <clears throat> um, getting data sensed just, you know, the space age just after being taken, and to be able to experiment and develop efficient data processing uh, workflows, and to produce timely and accurate information that customers need at a price they can sustain. Uh, a second uh, area of, uh, of audience is, of course, it's uh, those. Uh, prototypers and developers of hardware and software that can then integrate your components on board the AIX ecosystem and they can also perform fast and effective IOV campaign. This last point is very important. That means it can actually um, be able to uh, increase the channel of your, of your application in a very quickly and very effective way such a way you can demonstrate new concept quickly and you can maybe attract new um, investors or uh, new funding opportunities. Uh, after that, you can also have other companies that can become shareholders of the AX ecosystem, thanks to the blockchain-based um, service that we, uh, we plan to provide. And therefore, you can uh, purchase enabling hardware and software technologies and integrate them directly in your satellites to become part of a sort of a AIX federated constellation. And beside that, you can embed your space technology, sensors, memories, or whatever you want to try on the, uh, one of the AIX spacecraft, in particular, uh, the baseline now to use the ion uh, carrier that uh, we develop in the orbit. And that could be used potentially by all the AIX customers and deploy directly your app on the AIX marketplace. Uh, th those are the building blocks that you, you've seen before presented by, by Leonardo. I don't go through over again. I just, this slide just to tell you how the IX consortium would plan to benefit from, from this product or service. For instance, from the IX box, we uh, plan to sell the actual hardware and software and then to provide um, support and maintenance with update and probably uh, possible tr troubleshooting of, uh, of anything uh, the customer may, uh, may experience. As it regards for the IEX onboard services, those are the services I recall that uh, are provided, for instance, from the ION carrier. So basically, uh, you can you know, uh, use uh, the hosted payload capability of the ION carrier, and you can use the data that are provided by those hosted payload and then process directly on board. And in that case, you be charged by um, pay per use, basically in terms of resources, because those payloads would be using resources of the of the satellite, 
and such as telecommunication, computational time, and so on, uh, that would be charged basically on paper use on that on those resources. Of course, other kind of plants are, can also be imagined, such as uh, you know bundle plants where you buy a certain amount of time and then you can review that kind of subscription. As it regards the IAX App Store, um, we uh, foresee to uh, get a percentage on the revenues that each developer uh, would get by uh, proposing its services to, uh, to, to the user's audience. And for the development kit, we of course uh, uh, provide uh, the kit itself at a price together with a, a maintenance and um, support plan. Um, so uh, how you can actually benefit, uh, let's say from a technical point of view from the IAX uh, capabilities. Um, as it regards the payload operators, uh, basically you can uh, both get the advanced computational capabilities. I mean, the advantage to have computation capability directly at a source, um, so on, on in space, um, and then benefit yourself you don't i mean you don't you're not forced to share your results your findings with all the community but if you want you can also uh, embark uh, you can also share the findings to the uh, the iax community through the app store and therefore make um uh, getting probably extra revenues by um you know the use of your data and for both developers of apps that can you know manage those data and create that value and to final users. Otherwise, you can use the off-the-shelf application in the App Store. And so therefore, you can be able to analyze in a more deeper way uh, the data uh, that are the coming directly from space. And that can be done, again, both on your own satellites, but also on with the, exploiting the hosted payload capabilities on board of our ion uh, carrier. And also you can write, of course, your own uh, application for your own payload. I mean, you're not forced to share all that with the IX community. And that uh, could be particularly interesting, for instance, for uh, uh, university students or people that want to uh, uh, test uh, with special uh, algorithms on model. From a uh, user uh, that we call actionable, actionable customers point of view, uh, of course, you can, I mean, those people that don't own a payload or they're not really interested on, uh, um, on, uh, on producing and generating data from space, uh, you can basically uh, use one of the apps on the app store. So basically very, very much likely we do on our mobile phone with, for instance, data from Galileo. So you just, you know, get the information out of it. You don't, you're don't not really interested on the data uh, where they come from. And, but you can also write your own app to use those, those data and having directly exactly what you need for your own uh, purposes. So recapping, how you can be part of the IEX uh, um, ecosystem. So you can both purchasing hardware and software technology, integrate them on your satellite to become part of this kind of federated constellation. Otherwise, you can embed your technology or models on, uh, for instance, the ION carrier uh, to be used by all the IEX customers, or you can deploy or use your uh, app on the IEX marketplace. Um, from the uh, customer user's point of view, so you can, uh, if you, have a, if you are a payload operator, you can benefit by adding value to your uh, data generating space or to sell the information to actionable users through uh, one of the apps on the app store. Um, the app de developers from their point of view, they can sell the processed data generated by the payload to final users through the app. Uh, they can use either a subscription model or paper use model. I mean, one of the models I already know that you can see in, uh, in uh, uh, one of the usual app store that you have on your smartphone. Um, so we are pretty transparent to that actually. Um, and, uh, and the final users, they can benefit by having a very interactive environment where 
all the uh, uh, very, a large variety of actionable information can be bought along the possibility to validate new models and anal analysis and this kind of you know very collaborative environment where data processor data creators and data processing developers and final users would collaborate together so again that was a very brief uh, presentation um, so if you have any other question just follow up directly in this workshop or after it by using our contacts thank you very much Thank you, Stefano. Thank you, Lorenzo, and thank you, Leo, for the uh, presentation. And uh, okay, you have uh, already understand, understood that, that uh, uh, we want you to be part of this journey. So what, uh, what could be the opportunities of engagement in AI Express for you? I'm trying to go. Okay. Again, let's... Uh, uh, Let's consider what is the, the big matter of the AI Express. We want to reshape the space that we change, and we want to do that thanks to the concept of a space stream. So by using innovative technologies and the innovative mission concept, and the, 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 the pillars on which we base this uh, uh, innovation are those of uh, AI techniques, edge computing, and blockchain. We strongly believe that thanks to this uh, uh, model, we could uh, demonstrate early in orbit uh, the feasibility of, of our application. We can learn by failure, and so we can reach solid science and commercial goal. So, um, from uh, I, I read already some question and. Uh, uh, as a general consideration, I want to say to you that we started AIX uh, some months ago. So uh, we don't still have a complete solution to put on the table and to say, okay, use it. We want to build it together with you. And so we think that uh, we have set also some opportunities to be on the same, on the same project and the same roadmap. So the first option is a, uh, is that of uh, act uh, exactly as uh, users and future customers. So please set and share your needs so that uh, we can discuss how to make feasible your service not feasible today. What could be the payload and even the apps, the, app, the apex to be implemented as, uh, at the beginning of the, of the pro from the beginning of the project? What could be the, what should be the technology and protocols to be implemented inside the AIX in order to simplify your work and to simplify the possibility to integrate your technologies inside the AIX ecosystem. And what should be the, set, the service workflow, the way of doing, uh, the, way, the way of working of AIX. And we are also open to changes to business model in order to address all the possibility that the market, the space market, uh, gives give to you. So if we by by sharing this this uh, these needs, uh, of course uh, you could get uh, an early access to the platform, and uh, you could also get uh, the feature that you request uh, implemented uh, uh, at the beginning of the of the project. Other possibility another possibility is uh, as a uh, Stefan or let you understand is uh, given by the possibility of running your own technology in space. So uh, you could uh, use your uh, software to be uh, used inside the IIX uh, system. And uh, uh, from the other side, you can even put your payload, your space component, on board of uh, AI Express. And uh, after a first phase of validation of demonstration uh, and testing, you can put uh, at uh, the disposition of uh, AI Express in a paper way, paper use uh, way. Again, you can get the access to the, the implementation of the feature you need, but uh, you can, uh, of course, you need to direct collaborate with, uh, with us, we can demonstrate all the operational scenario directly in space, and you can get your operational scenario 
uh, implemented in an operational context. context. So uh, the, the, the last one is uh, to build uh, and to uh, deploy your uh, app directly in the Apex marketplace and uh, make it available for a pay-per-use uh, way. And again, the, you, of course, to do that, uh, you need to access uh, the IX development kit and uh, to collaborate with us. And you can sell uh, the, the app directly in, in uh, our store. So these are the opportunity to transform you as a, from a shareholder to a, uh, from a stakeholder to a shareholder of AIX. So let's recap what we have presented to you by the video of AIX in order to start the next session of the question. Okay, so this is the time to start with the question and answer session. I see that we have already a lot of uh, questions. And uh, please, uh, uh, let's start from the simplest one uh, and in order from Roberto uh, Camarero. Um, Roberto is asking uh, if uh, we will uh, uh, use only neural network, uh, artificial intelligence, machine learning, uh, uh, processing uh, algorithm, or even more traditional. Uh, Roberto, of course, uh, we strongly believe, as you saw in the space edge processing, and uh, we think that uh, we don't need to, to use only artificial intelligence or neural network uh, to process data. Maybe even uh, a more simpler, uh, algorithm could be implemented. So both classical and uh, innovative algorithm. Um, Leo Pauli, I don't know who is, uh, is, uh, is the development kit already available for third party developers now? Uh, as I told you, uh, we don't have still a solution to be put on the table. 
and uh, we are uh, developing it uh, together uh, with your uh, request if possible and uh, <clears throat> if uh, uh, we could have it uh, in uh, nine months or uh, uh, one year and so we want of course if you are in uh, engaged with us we could share the different step of the development then uh, Nick the speaker, uh, how does the AI hardware inside the AI box look like? Um, I don't know if we have already a, an answer for that. Uh, maybe Stefano could uh, could give an answer. Uh, yeah, quickly. We are developing a, a specific AI hardware to start. Uh, that hardware is designed to better be integrated with IN with our IN carrier, uh, but although it's been designed to, um, I mean, the requirements is to be as interoperable as possible so that everyone can benefit from it. The long-term idea, it's also to um, be able to host other payloads that can give service to other payloads. I mean, we want to be completely an open platform and in the future so that can anyone can possibly be part of this environment and give have the possibility to give computational services or other kind of services like artificial intelligence and so on to other payloads. So directly to ask to your questions, um, well, uh, I mean, we are, we went through the requirements, requirements right now, the IXbox, we are starting already the design. And of course, you guys will be keep up to date, possibly with other workshops if it will be possible, but uh, we keep up to date on the uh, specific requirement and interface so that you can check um, uh, um, how that would fit with your uh, your interfaces. I hope that answered your question. Uh, my, if I may, I would uh, uh, add a couple of words. Uh, as uh, Stefano was saying, we we mean to be to try the the hardware and be behind the development kit. So we actually uh, tend to be compatible with. Uh, diverse uh, accelerators and we can do it in uh, a couple of ways uh, one of them is abstracting the, the accelerating part from, from the from the application and it, we are working on, on this side but we also have the possibility to integrate uh, external accelerators uh, in specific cases if we want so the the, the baseline solution is having a uh, framework which uh, completely ab abstracts the, the underlying hardware, but we can also uh, integrate external hardware as part of the system or as a slave board if, uh, in the case, the, the computational capabilities of the, the AI Xbox we are uh, implementing now would be not enough for specific applications. Yeah, Leo, uh, there is also a question from Fabio Gerace about uh, the kind of payload to be embarked. Uh, yeah, ciao Fabio. Uh, obviously, as I was uh, saying, uh, uh, it, the easiest thing is go, go, going for with the multispectral sensor for, uh, for uh, the baseline for a couple of reasons, because it, they uh, we have uh, several uh, algorithms already able to uh, to take advantage uh, of them, and uh, because of uh, physical constraints, so uh, optical thermal infrared, also uh, in situ sensors as Langomir probes are inside uh, already inside our uh, roadmap. Uh, if you are thinking to synthetic aperture radar, it's uh, something we. Uh, are also considering, uh, I guess, in a couple of years, uh, we, we have the, 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 the possibility to, to embark a, a SAR on, on board the DION platform. Uh, but uh, we do not have a, a date for a synthetic aperture radar on board our uh, AIX. Also, the question from uh, Leo Pauli, maybe you, Leo, and also Lorenzo. Yeah, Leo, we are uh, 
targeting uh, diverse uh, kind of users. So the, the kit would make, uh, let's say, uh, anyone able to build its own uh, workflow on, on top uh, of our framework. But absolutely, we uh, would, uh, are also uh, open uh, to, to leave the, the, the developers implement their own uh, framework, their own libraries on board. Could be uh, easy if you have your own board uh, at your complete, uh, if you buy the box and you put uh, on, on top of your satellite, it's easier. If you want to develop a, an application, uh, using your framework uh, and then deploy it uh, on the App Store. It, it's uh, okay. It, we have a, a validation uh, schema, so you can do it. Uh, we, then you have to to pass through the, the this validation process in order to make uh, everything confident. The, the, your libraries uh, fits uh, into the, the the ecosystem. Let's say with good uh, performances uh, as well. Yes, uh, I don't know if uh, Lorenzo wants to add something or uh, it's okay. No, I think it's okay what uh, what okay. Leo said. Absolutely. Okay, thank you. And uh, a question uh, from uh, Greg Cipollone: uh, How do you protect IP in value stream, my box, app store, on board service? Uh, Greg, we have not yet defined the final the final configuration of the IP protection. Nevertheless, there will be, as Stefano uh, showed, there, are, there will be some components uh, uh, that could be bite and will be protected. And uh, we hope to have also some of the other components that will be open uh, to be for the community to be improved and uh, uh, other components that could have a, a specific uh, business model and uh, what we want to have is a ever-growing community and even ever-growing ecosystem made by, even made by heterogeneous satellite. So we want that our technology could be uh, shared uh, between the different, uh, between different actors and could be integrated in a common, uh, in a common ecosystem. I hope to have answered. And uh, the next question from Tis Crony is, uh, if, is there an option to embed AX in my payload hardware to get access to the software framework? Uh, and if yes, what will the hardware requirement be? Uh, um, yes, uh, we, want, uh, as said, uh, we want that our solution could be embarked and embedded in other solution. And uh, we are still in the process of defining what could, what should be the best uh, interfaces so that uh, the most of the customer and the uh, shareholder could, uh, could have their work of integration simplified. So please contribute if you have some requests, uh, some needs and some protocol that you could, you think should be implemented in an AX. Seems that we do not have. Any... Yeah, we had this, uh, one more question from Roberto. Maybe we forgot to, to answer. He was asking about uh, what application do we target uh, uh, to to have on board, and actually, it's it's really a, a good question. Uh, we have a, a huge list of uh, application, and uh, we are trying to to make trade-offs, uh, also considering the, the hardware requirements and uh, to um, changing the application in uh, co completely going to the idea of having uh, intelligence on board. But uh, one of the reasons we are uh, making the, this, uh, this meeting today is also to collect uh, user needs. So we have uh, our application, we have our cases in mind and we are at the moment designing the, the, the system, the workflow and then the components on top of this, but it will be really nice for us if uh, users, if future customers that are now interested in 
expressing the preferences or collaborating with, with us uh, and even trying to, to test, to validate their idea of onboard application could contribute in uh, to our list, let's say. So maybe steering also our uh, baseline uh, idea. Thank you. Moreover, uh, it seems that uh, all AIX is oriented to earth observation, but uh, we still can use uh, AIX uh, for addressing science uh, activities uh, and uh, even scientific program. So uh, we have also a lot of collaboration with scientific institution and uh, we want uh, to, uh, to involve also them into the loop. Um, consider again that uh, Planetech uh, has a long heritage in uh, Earth observation services. So we have a, a long list of uh, uh, services that today are not feasible and maybe it could be implemented in a, in a different way by using technology of AI Express. But uh, we want uh, to share with uh, all the stakeholders, uh, all the space stakeholders, our choice in order to, to implement uh, the best choice uh, from the beginning. Um, okay, mm, I don't see, or better, I see another. Yeah, look at the Philippi. Uh, a question from Luca. Can you elaborate more on the ground segment architecture inside the AIX value chain? How the initiative is related to Copernicus and other EO European program? Please, uh, Leo, if you want to say something about the first part. Yeah, ciao, Luca. Uh, the ground segment ar architecture, let's say we are now uh, uh, concentrating on, on the new part. The ground segment is uh, a, a service infrastructure uh, to us at the moment. So uh, we are going to uh, use uh, uh, cloud infrastructure for most of, of the things we have. Uh, we do have uh, uh, capabilities a uh, control center uh, here in Bari, but uh, the ion will be controlled by the orbit. They, they, they already have uh, satellites flying now, and so we, we have the, the mission control uh, capabilities. We uh, have here the, 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 the heritage. We already sell services uh, on, on, on the web, let's say, so uh, we will rely on that as well. And uh for the uh, uh all the other things we will use them as a service we do not plan to have our own uh, antennas we are relying on uh, uh ex external provider in, in that and also for the, the computational capabilities on, on the ground we uh, do not plan to to have a traditional ground segment it's it will be uh, shipped in uh, uh, as a service uh, approach. Yes, it, it is not integrated to strictly integrated with other uh, European programs. But of course, as a, uh, I was saying at the beginning, we strongly believed that uh, we cannot solve uh, all the problem by use of a customer by using only one kind of mission, only one kind of sensor, and so the uh, workflow and the, the capability to fuse information coming from different mission must be exploited at most in order to, uh, to deeply address the, the needs of our customers. Okay. Okay, we, we are in time for the conclusion. So of course, if you have question, uh, please send uh, us and uh, uh, I want to, to make some remarks about conclusion and the next step. Uh, as uh, Leo was saying, this first workshop was uh, made in order to present this new program, to let you understand what could be your engagement. And so we sent also a survey and uh, we presented it again to you. Uh, at the end of this workshop. So please, if you want to be part, please submit your interest and even in being part of the program or simply uh, to address the, the most important needs from your point of view. 
Then from April 2021, we will start with one-to-one -one interview in order to implement uh, and to, to address, to, to understand what are the most interesting uh, uh, needs from uh, stakeholders, shareholder, customer point of view. We will have a, a, another uh, workshop uh, in uh, September 2021. And uh, I think that uh, I didn't said, uh, say at the beginning, uh, we hope to have our maiden flight at the, at the end in the core four quarter of the 2022. And uh, I want to conclude my presentation with uh, Dante Alighieri. Uh, tomorrow is uh, what uh, we in Italy call Dante D every 25th of March. And this year, uh, we, we are at 700 years from his death. And uh, one part of his most famous uh, opera, uh, Divina Commedia, uh, in the canto 26 of uh, hell, he says, uh, considerate la vostra semenza, fatti non fosti a vivere come bruti, ma perseguire virtute e conoscenza. Of course, we strongly, I think that uh, uh, all the attendees and uh, the participants to this workshop strongly believe in what Dante is saying. And uh, we want to pursue virtual knowledge and innovation. Thank you again. Thank you, everybody. We hope to, to have provided to you all the information to start this new journey together. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye, everybody. Thank you. Have a good day. Thank you. Stay Take safe. Care. Ciao. Ciao. Ciao.